<laughs> Rattaloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1209. We are at war. December 14th, 2023, 55 degrees on this day in 1998. And man, was it chilly in 1901. 27 below. Woo! Ooh. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor. Joe Sushir. Help me. Help me. Let's go. Have, what is Gen Z? The generation Who are they? after me, I believe. That's That would be your modern day 20 to 30 year old, right? And what are millennials? That's the 30 to 40 year old group. So hang on before I don't want 9,000 emails. Hang on. So pretty much everybody up until the age of 40. Would encompass Gen Z and Millennials? Generation Z is the second youngest generation with Millennials before that and Generation Alpha after. Gen Zs were born between the late 1990s and the early 2010s. Okay, and how about Millennials? That would be, uh, hang on, Millennial? Well, I would assume, wouldn't that be 1990 to 1980? Okay, my point being that uh, as we as we realize we're in a war for the future, these people cannot be counted on. Correct. Uh, eight, 1980s, a starting burst, and the mid-1990s to early 2000s well, for millennials. On a whole, or individually, generation. there's many, many that you can count on. Or but generation. on a whole, as a generation, I think you're right, Joe. Millennials is also Generation Y. What, whatever. My point is, uh, in the main, as Father Whalen used to say, okay. in the main... These younger generations cannot be counted on to either fight in the war I'm talking about, which is to preserve this country, uh, nor are they even aware that there is one. And proof of that is that these people uh, now suffer from menu anxiety. <laughs> they go to a restaurant and they and they don't know what to do. They have menu anxiety and they're afraid to talk to uh, the help staff, and they they don't uh, they don't they're worried about the environmental impact of the food, and they're uh, they're they're I can't go on with this. It's so silly, but uh, our individual choices matter," said Jessica Hahn, Avocado Green Senior Vice hmm. President of Brand Marketing and Sustainability. From how we eat to how we sleep, our collective decisions are inextricably linked to the health of our communities. So these are people who not only uh, are comfortable with collectivism, but believe they should practice it. What? These are not free individuals. They think they're free, but they've embraced the BS from the failed academy. And now they're out into the world. And it's a minor it's a minor way that it's displaying itself. But here they are in a restaurant and they're 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 pretty afraid of how to behave. Menu anxiety. That's right. Three in ten Americans have menu exi- menu anxiety. <laughs> it's a survey of two thousand adults found younger generations were far more likely to have anxiety while ordering. of Gen Z and Millennials, that's age 18 to 43, compared with only 15% of Gen X and Baby Boomers, age 44 to 77. I guess I'm I'm at the tail end. No, I'm at the beginning of the Baby Boomer generation. I don't have menu anxiety. I, it right. never would have occurred to me. Okay, I do. I will admit this. I do occasionally suffer from menu anxiety. And that is, when you take me out to dinner, do I get the New York Strip or do I get the filet? <laughs> no, you're worried about who's paying for it. I, I know who's paying for it already. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you in the back. Matt Eubanks is a comedian. Yeah. Hey. Here's 30 seconds on Gen Z going to war. Win the battle? We wouldn't even make it to the field. Just a bunch of life coaches and bloggers. We'll help. <laughs> I don't want to get my shoes dirty. <laughs> You ever been shot? No, I've been triggered. Okay. (laughs) All right.
right men, tomorrow we march. What is that, ragweed out there? <laughs> it looks like a lot of pollen out on that field right now. <laughs> Can we delay the battle till April? I am very sensitive. <laughs> I did not bring my inhaler. Conducted by one pole. That's one word. It's called one pole. And commissioned by Avogadro... <laughs> Avocado green mattress. What? Huh? <laughs> what? Avocado green mattress. The very that. fact that this was dreamed up as a poll question helps rest my case. If this is what they're worried about, we've got little hope. Let's talk about the war we're in. Wait a second. On the whole, I've, I think I've seen that they allow the activists among them to speak for them and to proselytize, proselytize. To, them, to them. Yeah. And they'll sit there and take that preaching and believe it as truth. And they don't seem capable of making courageous life decisions on their own. Nope. Um, they don't read books. They can't even watch a movie. They nope. can't sit still to watch a movie. Their whole life has been staring at um, two-minute videos on their phone. Their brains are mush. So what is the war I'm talking about? Do you want me to answer? Or you yeah, I, I, go ahead. Uh, it's the war on our, our way of life, the American dream, and our future, the our future, future of this country. I've been listening to Brett Weinstein, who I admire. Uh, he, If you'll remember, we would covered this on the air, not knowing that he would go on to achieve some fame as a podcast deep thinker. But Brett Weinstein was a, if I'm not mistaken, a biology, te- evolutionary biology teacher yeah. at a college in... Yeah. Evergreen. Washington, Evergreen College in the yep. state of Washington, yep. and 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 to uh, to indicate the the failure of that academy, they one day in the spring five six seven years ago we I remember talking about it on the show they had a day where all white people were not allowed to be on campus right and he said bleep you he right. he, he knew enough to say. And what do you mean? I'm a teacher. I'm not. What do you mean? I can't be here. Both and him and his wife, Heather. Both, and, yeah, and, Heather. And remind everybody, Joe, he was a uh, a far left liberal at the time. You know, that we're not talking about a crazy conservative like us. No, he, but, but I think what he discovered is what many of us discover, that he was a liberal in the classical sense. Uh, most of right. us are if we stop right. to examine it. Right, the, yeah. The yeah, point right. is, the point is he, he his eyes were open, just like David Gallertner's mm-hmm. eyes were open. But there are very few of them having their eyes open. In any event, I believe his refusal to leave campus... Uh, to acquiesce to this ridiculous movement uh, caused him either to get fired or he quit. That part he I was know. run out of there. He was uh, he was Satan, uh, right. the devil. And, yeah. and now he uh, he has come to realize that this country is in a great war for its future. And the experience he would bring to that observation is what he went through with this ridiculous thing called a college in Washington, Evergreen, mm-hmm. and and. and but what he had an early look at was what we know to be the failed academy. They're miserably failed uh, to the point where three Ivy League presidents cannot cannot uh, uh, bring themselves to condemn genocide. For God's sakes, we're at war, and I, I and he, the people in Euphoria, Diversityville, and Liberal Lakes either don't care or don't know. They'll just they'll wake up one day and they will have been hit over the head with a terrible reality that life is not going to be the same. And it's no longer hyperbole to call this a war. It's it's everywhere. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at what? A high ranking member of of Mayor Michelle Wu's administration. Michelle Wu is the mayor of Boston. A high-ranking, so this takes us out of the field of the failed academy into the world of the failed political spectrum. 
A high-ranking member of Mayor Michelle Wu's administration issued an apology after an email invitation for electeds of color holiday party was mistakenly sent out to all members of the Boston City Council. She wanted it to only go to the city council members who were of color. Now, rookie, immediately look up the Boston City Council and tell me how many people of color are on the Boston City Council. In fact, you could do it by saying uh, Boston City Council photo, and maybe a photo will pop up of okay. it. Uh, Denise DeSantos, Wu's director of city council relations, well, there's a tip off right there. The mayor needs a director of relations to get along with the council. Remember, George Latimer had two people in his cabinet, and that wasn't that long ago. Denise DeSantos, Wu's director of city council relations, sent an email to the council's honorable members that read, On the behalf of Mayor Michelle Wu, I cordially invite you and a guest to the Electeds of Color holiday party. On uh, It was yesterday. At 5.30 p.m. at the Parkman House, 33 Beacon Street. About 15 minutes later, however, DeSantos sent out a follow-up email to council members apologizing for the previous message. Of the 12 members, and there's a city council president, so that would make it 13, six are of color. So six were excluded in the invite. Correct. All right. I wanted to apologize for my previous email regarding the holiday party. I did send that to everyone by accident. I apologize if my email may have offended or came across as so, DeSantos wrote, and that's a non-apology. That's not an apology. (laughs) Sorry for any confusion this may have caused. I think it would have caused great confusion. Mm -hmm. Great confusion, don't you? Isn't this something? Mayor Wu told Boston 25 yesterday afternoon that the group has been in place for many years and compared the event to Boston's various multi-faith holiday celebrations. Ah. Really? I, I, find I, it, I find it unusual that Mayor Wu would introduce uh, faith to a political dynamic. I mean, again, this is a group that has been in place for many, many years. We celebrate all kinds of connection and identity and culture and heritage in the city. Just yesterday, we hosted in the city our official Hanukkah celebration. We have had tree lighting, said Wu. We want to be a city where everyone's identity is embraced and there are spaces and communications we can help support. She's really got the uh, the bureaucratic speak down. Yeah. Uh, they love the word spaces. Mayor Michelle Wu says this email was an honest mistake and was in no way a means uh, uh, of an effort to divide the city council, but a way to bring people together. Well, that's an absolute lie. That's just a lie. The Electeds of Color is a group that meets regularly, and she says this year she was asked to host the holiday party. She's backpedaling so fast she's going to fall down on the treadmill here at any moment. (laughs) Boston 25 reached out to a few of the city councilors who were uninvited to this holiday party. None wanted to comment. None of them them wanted to comment? Somebody (laughs) should have had a tirade. Outgoing councilor Frank Baker told the Boston Herald he was not offended. Well, of course, they're not offended. This is what we're up against when we talk about war. These are people, Michelle Wu would be included, who don't identify you as an individual. Hmm. You are only identified as part of a group. And in your case, as a white guy, it was easy to exclude that white group from the holiday party for the electeds of color because she's identifying people only by their membership in groups. That's not the way this country worked. Did for a while. We got over it. It doesn't work that way. It shouldn't work that way. And most importantly, it can't work that way. Does she mention people that are the children of mixed race couples? She doesn't. Which which way do they go? I don't know. They're ha- they can they're halfway through the door. And somebody brings them a canopy. <laughs> they got to stay in. The, you can come in the building, but you have to stay you in the can foyer. Look. You can take a look <laughs> yeah. inside, but then please leave. Not the foyer, the parlor. Stay in the parlor. Yeah, the parlor. Do you, do you guys think that at their Christmas party, like ours, all the shop guys hoard all the drink tickets? Do you think they do that as well? <laughs> here's the email. Uh, here's the invitation that went out. 
Honorable members, on behalf of Mayor Michelle Wu, I cordially invite you and a guest to the Electeds of Color holiday party on Wednesday, December 13th, 5.30 p.m. at the Parkman House, 33 Beacon Street. I wonder what that cost the taxpayers. Woo. That's a pretty nice address. Yes, it is. Please let me know if you plan to attend and if you have any dietary restrictions. Hi, counselors and team. This is the follow-up. I wanted to apologize for my previous email regarding a holiday party for tomorrow. I did send that to everyone by accident. I apologize if my email have offended or came across as so. Sorry for any confusion this may have caused. You, 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 you. Don't you call me a you, you. Don't call me a you, you. It's just silliness, isn't it? It's just silly. And then this mayor compounds her... What, what, what is she compounding? Oh, she's uninviting half the No, she likens this to, well, we celebrate everything. We have Hanukkah and we light trees. and we, it, But that's not analogous, Wu. That's not analogous. Of course, if you're going to light a Hanukkah tree, it would be mostly for Jewish people. And if you're going to light a Christmas tree, that's mostly for anybody who just wants to hang around. Right. You specifically said uh, this is a holiday party for the... Coloreds? Did they use the word coloreds? Oh, God, don't. No, no. no. Uh, they, they've re replaced colored with people of color. No, they said uh, electeds of color. Yeah. Yeah, electeds okay. of color. You can't say colored, but right, right, people right. of so, color. So the are... electeds of color. And that's different than no. Jewish or Catholic <laughs> or Lutheran or Presbyterian. <laughs> maybe, that's maybe it is in their mind, but... She doesn't have a doctor uh, degree, does she? Um, uh, Matt, yep. Michelle Wu, Michelle w, Wu, w U, Boston. W U. What difference does it make that we're looking her up? We will, but <laughs> my God, the closer you get to the country's tallest buildings, it's the same BS. It's utterly the same BS. Michelle Wu is Chinese. Born January 14th, 85, the daughter of Taiwanese That's immigrants. That's all I want to know. She was the first Asian woman to serve on the Boston City Council. You have to be first. That's very crucial. Um, she's Okay. Let me find where she was. Did she ever have a job? She was born on the south side of Chicago. Her father, Han Wu, uh, Illinois Institute of Technology for Graduate Studies. They didn't speak any English. Michelle's was first doctor, language probably. is Mandarin. I wonder. Um, yeah. Is he with me? She graduated from Barrington <laughs> High School in 2003, where she was valedictorian. She received perfect scores on the SAT and ACT, and she was selected as presidential scholar from Illinois. Uh, she moved to Boston to attend Harvard, where she graduated with a degree in economics in 2007. Stop. There are many kids who might have received the accolades she earned. And they wouldn't have become Mysterians. I'm, I'm sensing that what you're reading to me indicates that the failed academy got their grips on her and she bought in. Yep. She bought in. After, after going through the American dream. Keep going. Yeah. Um, after college, she worked at the Boston Consulting Group. Her mother began to suffer mental illness, went back to Chicago. In 2009, she returned to Massachusetts with her mother and youngest siblings to earn her JD from Harvard Law School. She graduated in 2012. I don't think much of Harvard. All right. In 2010, she worked in Boston City Hall for the mayor in the Office of Administration and Finance and later as a fellow uh, uh, for law and public policy under Menino's, that doesn't matter. Well, yet again, she wasn't Abe Lincoln who threw down the axe and rode the horse to serve the public. Well, she went she, straight from school she, to she went, political she, life. She sounds like she fully was embraced by and accepted the embrace of the failed academy, including Harvard. Mm -hmm. And now she's the mayor of Boston, and she's full of S, <laughs> just like <laughs> all of them are. Just yep. full of eyes into the new Green Deal. Oh, Christ. Uh, uh, be with she us. described voice her desire to <laughs> yes, demilitarize. Christ, Christ be with me. <laughs> she wanted to yeah. demilitarize the city's police department. Well, of course she does. That's part of the agenda. Demilitarize. What does that even mean? 
take away their firearms. That's the new word for defund, right? Wouldn't that just be the new? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Although gotta... even I, even I sometimes question why when the cops show up somewhere, they, it looks like an invading army. They got Hummers and they got helicopters and they got cannons and they got nuclear bombs and they got, you know, trucks. <laughs> nuclear and, bombs. Yeah, for they their safety. They, and... and they bring them. <laughs> they bring them. Officers... Officer safety and the safety of the nearby residents yeah. and people around. My garage door guy is not a guy. It's the whole family. Garage door of the Twin Cities. and I'm sorry. It's precision garage door of the Twin Cities in western Wisconsin. I like the name because to me, a garage door working properly requires precision. Yes. There's no fooling around Constant here. precision. They're hiring. Uh, there's no need for you not to take a look at this. They're hiring garage door technicians, garage door installers. Why would they need an installer? Because Precision Garage Door of the Twin Cities will get you a new door if you need one. Not to mention the rollers, the springs, the opener, the lights that are supposed to work, the whole deal. These are good people. They're an equal opportunity employer. They serve the Twin Cities in western Wisconsin. They don't charge more. For weekend visits, they keep you apprised the whole way via text. And when they're there, it's a great outfit. Put these in, put their number in your telephone closet and quit emailing me about wondering what a telephone closet is. It used to be where you had the phone. Come on. It was an untamed beast, that phone. It <laughs> rang and you didn't know what it was. Keep it in the closet. Could you go in there and buck dial? Yes. Or was that something different? That's what you <laughs> did. a little different. Call a precision door. <laughs> a secret word. At 612-263-6985 or find them at precisiondoormn.com. There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.com org in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783, or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 HOPE line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. You know, the investment game can be awfully tricky, especially in these volatile times, and that's why you need the best, and also somebody that you can trust, and that's why I rely on Josh Arnold. We know him as Mr. Money Talk around these parts, and he's here for you. So give him a call today for that free 48 minute no obligation consultation by dialing 952-925-5608 952-925-5608 josh has been at this a long time with a track record of success and he's here to help you so give him a call today no obligation that's right no obligation it's absolutely free 952-925-5608 and tell him you heard about him here on the garage logic podcast investment services offered by josh arnold investment consultant llc a security investment advisor past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser. All right, Let's I'm, go! I'm, 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 I'm. The Earth is not your mother. The Joe Suchere Show. Just, just to see if I remember. You won't. He's not going to remember. I know he won't remember. But I'll tell you what I do remember. I do remember to always call Zero Res to get my carpets zero resified. And right now in January, yeah, we're a couple of days. Well, how many days are we away from Christmas? 10, 11 days, 10 days? Coming up, man. It's coming up. <laughs> uh, I don't know what their schedule is. I don't know if they'll have them done in time before Christmas, but you can certainly call and get on their schedule. 
They'll have it done, and they'll do it the right way. And when you ask for the GL Rookie Special, I'm talking about zero res here, you will get three rooms that are zero resified, starting at just 129 bucks. And don't forget, there's dirt and dander in your air ducts. If you haven't had them clean the entire time you've been in your home, this month you can take 75 bucks off when you get your air ducts zero res clean. I started with Zero Res many, many years ago when they bought ads time on Garage Logic. They are a great company. They are a Minnesota company, and they will get your home ready for the holidays with a 4.9 rating on Google and over 17,000 reviews that you can go poke around and check it out. The Zero Res got to love it guarantee. It makes it easy to get what you pay for. Zero Res stands behind every single cleaning. So don't miss this deal. Call Zero Res right now, 952 Z E R O R E Z. Go online to zeroresminnesota.com and say you want the rookie and the GL special. Say the name to get the discount. Spell it forwards or backward. It's spelled the same Zero Res. If, if there's any doubt that the war is the oppressed, real or imagined, getting away with labeling anyone they disagree with as an oppressor, that's the war. If there's any doubt about that, what would the reaction have been among the oppressed if Wu invited only white council members oh, to a Christmas dear party? God. <laughs> What would have happened on the campus of Harvard had, as we pointed out yesterday, had a, uh, a Ku Klux Klan group arrived on campus uh, calling for the genocide of Jews? Yeah. Well, that one might have confused them. Well, who do we root because, for here? Because the, the, the yeah. Jews are oppressors, but so are the Ku Klux Klan. So I don't know where they would have gone with that. Sure. But that's your war. That's our war. But that everyone is at risk of the overpowering tidal wave of these people calling anyone they disagree with oppressors, mm. oppressors. But what would she have gotten? She couldn't have gotten away with it, nor should she have invited just white city council members. Why not just invite the city council if you're going to waste the taxpayers' money and go have some eggnog? Well, just say, hey, council, see you on Beacon Street at 530. <laughs> right. Well, See, not, life is simple in GL. Well, not to mention, just invite everybody. That way it gives everybody the equal chance to come up with an excuse as to, to why they're go. not going. Right. Exactly. <laughs> now, oh, my kid's got soccer that day. Believe well, it or December. not, I have something positive coming up. But I can't, I can't tell you that yet. Let's go. <laughs> Downing alerts me to a poll. 20% of young Americans age 18 to 29, most of whom have menu anxiety, Think the Holocaust is a myth. Oh, jeez. That's one in five. Yeah. Wow. Nearly 30% think Jews wield too much power in America, while well, including that uh, crazy city council guy in Washington who thinks the snow was uh, uh, controlled by the, by uh, the Rothschilds. Rothschilds. Yeah. <laughs> too bad the people who run the institutions of higher learning are, learning are okay with their students believing whatever lies they want to believe. It's a poll by the new a new economist slash you gov poll. Found one in five young Americans believe the Holocaust is a myth while well, nearly three I've been to the uh, camps, young kids. Uh it ain't a myth, you idiots. Jesus Christ. Uh, that's pretty, please be with us. That's pretty um is it the goal of these failed universities to just churn out complete idiots? Yes. That's the end goal. So yes. the government can take over and babysit yes. us. Mind I control. love yeah. I love black helicopter conversations. This is working out really, really well for them. <laughs> yeah. It won't be but a matter of years and we'll all just be completely helpless. According to the, well, if you stop and think about the people you deal with in your daily life, not not indicting them as bad people, but when you stop to think about, if you reflect at the end of the day on the dealings you had with people during the day, uh, how often were you impressed? Well, it's it's a little different for me, but I certainly see your point, yeah. According to the poll last week, 20% of Americans age 18 to 29 agreed with the statement, the Holocaust is a myth while a greater percentage agreed with the statement that the Holocaust has been exaggerated. 
I wonder if they... of re- 30% of respondents said they did not know whether the Holocaust is a myth, while wow. 28% adopted the anti-Semitic statement that Jews wield too much power in America. The poll noted that Holocaust denial spans <laughs> throughout all levels of education, while noting that social media might play a role in worsening anti-Semitism. The findings from the poll noted a recent Generation Lab survey, which found that young adults who use TikTok were more likely to hold anti-Semitic beliefs. I believe TikTok should be banned in this country. Many people agree with you. It's a Chinese company, and I, I, they're up to no good. I don't know what the hell they're doing or how they do it, but I want them out of here. And take the U.N. Get with you. Out. It's a perfect storm out there, said Rabbi Abraham Cooper, Associate Dean and Director of Global Social Action for the Simon Weisenthal Center. Cooper explained to the foreign desk that various factors at play regarding the spread of anti-Semitism among young Americans. A state's policy that promotes Holocaust denial and denigration of the six million Jewish victims, the Iranian regime. A generation brought up on social media, uh, uh, including and especially TikTok, which leads to the Holocaust denial and misappropriation of the Shoah, including by politicians. Seems everyone is compared to Hitler. A generation with information glut but little perspective. No online librarian, no filters, little collective memory back to the 20th century. Well, yeah, plus what we learn is they're taking true-false tests on whether men can have become pregnant. They're not studying history. Right. Free tuition, free tuition, free tuition. <laughs> this is... This is <laughs> we have to pay their tuition. We're at war, people. <laughs> we're at war. The preservation of a free Western society is under attack. The preservation of individualism is under attack. Mm. That is not, it's no longer hyperbole. All right. And now you've got these poorly, they're not even educated. They're proselytized. Yeah. They're not educated. Right. No, they're pre, yep. They're just sitting in pews, soaking it all in. They're being brainwashed, and, and they want free tuition. They want us to pay for it. Well, some of these folks, though, 18 to 29, don't go to college. Some of the folks in this poll, right? I'm assuming. So what? Um, They're just as stupid. No, yeah, I, thought, I agree. Com- they I agree didn't completely. learn anything in high school. I agree. I thought the academy specific. has failed beginning in kindergarten, John. Yeah. It's failed. Tough to argue. I thought you specifically mentioned education in, oh, in was what it you the- just read. Yeah. Everybody in school. Well, let me let me. I thought you said something about students. Let me try to clarify that. No, it was twenty percent of Americans. Okay, all, all right. right. Eighteen to twenty. But uh, that doesn't that does not alarm me. That uh, I, I don't trust a high school. Do you trust a public high school in Minneapolis or St. Paul nope. to be teaching the Holocaust? <laughs> no, no. I don't trust He's, them to be teaching history. That's our the history. Yeah. Yeah. What's what's sad about this is that they're blundering and stumbling into their own demise. What they want is going to lead to their destruction. Well, the destruction of all of us, but well, them included. Well, Kenny, I, I mean, that, social Ken- demo. Wait a minute, social democrats, socialist democrats. They're supporting Hamas. Do they have? They're just so uneducated and stupid. No, they're supporting what they believe to be the oppressed. And I don't see how that's the war. Are they going to win? In which case your life becomes meaningless. Or are they going to lose? Which means the preservation of meaningful individual liberty. They are going to themselves become um, oppressed and it's going to lead to their own destruction. Well, I, I'm, I, unfortunately, uh, I'm pessimistic about that. I they're, they've insulated and, and occupied every important institution in this country. Mysterians have, have occupied every institution of this country. We have Jews in America protesting Jews in right. Israel. Right. What in the hell is going on? Meanwhile, Christians are supporting Jews in Israel. The what rabbi in the world? Uh, Rabbi Cooper has an interesting point. He notes that for many young Americans, 
historical facts don't mean as much as feelings and influencers. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's that is so Isn't unfortunate. That Isn't that something? Oh, my word. Oh. Society cannot afford to repeat the tragedies of the past. Simon Weisenthal, the late Holocaust survivor and Nazi hunter, said this back in 1980, way before the Internet. When asked if the Holocaust could happen again, he said, if you have a crisis in society, plus organized hate, plus technology, anything is possible. It seems like we have arrived at a crossroads, he said. Hmm. And we're not immune from it either, uh, because us supporting Jews in Israel means our certain destruction, too. We'll be in the camps also. Man, Everybody man. who disagrees with their way of life will be in their camps. Uh, How are you doing over there? I think it's time. Four. What time Give lunch. What? <laughs> Leroy. Uh, well, thank you for downing to alerting me to that survey. No I have a, a ray of hope. Would I? Should I do that right now? Well, it is Positive ahead. Thursday. Okay. It's a ray of hope. <laughs> it is? I think it's Thursday, right? Well, we used yeah. to think that, well, you know, on Thursdays we'll, we'll try to be it. positive. Pick it up. But Pick it up. It didn't really work out. Hell of a run for Positive <laughs> Thursday, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, Paul Root uh, is writing regarding Stop the Dig, where you can go to the American Experiment yes. website and sign a petition attempting to stop this terrible boondoggle of a new billion-dollar state office building for these thieves. Last week, I got the email from the American Experiment to send the petition to stop the new state representative's office building and send it to my representative. I know you did as well. We filled out the petition yep. the other day, and I submitted my Sent objection. It. I'm wondering what the difference is in the response I got from my representative— Marion Rarick versus the leftist that represents you. Marion, you will recall, has been on your show. I take credit for that as I sent you mail of her constituent newsletter. And we read that and we were so impressed. We had Marion on the show. At the time, what was her name? Marion what? O'Neill. Uh, O'Neill. But she married the guy she brought in here, Rarick, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And Jason. old fashioned like she took Jason his name. name. Yep. What? Jason was his first name. Mary, you know, recall, has been on your show. I take credit for that. Okay. It is so refreshing to have an elected official representing me for a change as opposed to 30 years of getting emails explaining to me why my view was wrong while living in Washington County. Here is Marion's response. In other words, Paul Root, a constituent of Marion, sent uh, her his opposition to the state office building. Okay. Greetings, Paul. Thank you for sharing your concerns on the ridiculous remodel and massive expansion of the House State Office Building. You are correct. The Democratic majority rammed this language through without considering all the costs involved. And unsurprisingly, the final price tag for this luxury office building has grown into nothing short of outlandish. It will now cost more money to remodel officers for legislators than it did to restore the entire Capitol building itself. That was $300 million a few years ago. It's going to cost the taxpayers $730 million for the renovation and expansion, of which $275 million is interest alone. This is over eight times the amount it costs to build a brand-new Senate building, $90 million. I believe that Minnesotans are grossly overtaxed and are already struggling to make ends meet with rising, rising grocery costs, energy prices, and inflation. Spending such a ridiculous amount of money on a fancy new office building is insulting to Minnesotans and a shameful waste of resources. Last legislative session, as the legislature debated the record-breaking $19 billion surplus, I advocated that those dollars be used to create meaningful, permanent tax relief by cutting the income tax, eliminating the Social Security tax, and offering additional tax credits to Minnesotans. Unfortunately, Democrats have 
demonstrated that they would rather invest nearly a billion dollars of Minnesota's tax dollars into their own office space than find ways to improve the lives of the people who pay their salary. Mm. Please know that I have tried to halt the construction of this new building. My Republican colleagues and I have sent formal requests to the governor and other officials involved in constructing this bureaucratic palace to reconsider and to look at other more cost-effective options. However, the entirety of state government is currently in Democratic control, and they have remained adamant that they want to move forward with construction of their new office building. I am committed to continuing to do what I can to push for greater transparency and for those dollars to be spent on something that benefits the people, not politicians. Thank you again for reaching out, and please let me know if you have any other comments or concerns. Thanks and blessings. Isn't that a good way to oh, sign blessings. a letter? blessings. Yeah, that's nice. Thanks and blessings. Representative Marion Rarick, proudly representing House District 29B. Isn't she a rare gem? Isn't she a rare gem? Uh, In his letter to her, Paul Root's letter to her was, Representative Marion, please ask House leadership to pause construction of the new House office building before it becomes the next Southwest light rail transit project marked by cost overruns and missed deadlines. Since the full House never voted to specifically fund this project, interest costs are ballooning to the final price tag of $729 million. As you know, that's more than the $90 million allotted to build the state office building just a few years ago. It appears the decision to remodel instead of completely rebuild is what's driving this exorbitant cost. The decision should be revisited once the 2024 session begins in Feb after a pause in construction. Please choose transparency and cost effectiveness over stubbornness and waste. Please pause the construction of the new office building. Sincerely, Paul Rudick. And then we read Marion's response to him, which was wonderful. And he's doing what every GLer should do, probably to no avail, because you're fighting only mysterious. Right. But- they don't seem to be reasonable people. They don't seem to be happy people. They don't seem to be sensible people. And they don't seem to be people who have my interest at heart or your interest at heart. Agreed. I'm not happy. <clears throat> Which one are you? Yeah. What do you want? I want you to tell me about our friends at EcoFund. Well, Motorsports. our friends at EcoFund held a Christmas sale going on now that's very impressive. It's the mix and match Christmas sale. What do you do? At EcoFund Motorsports. You buy one item, vehicle, bike, whatever, get the next one. 50% off. Okay. What a time to load up for the next riding season, Let's which go. given given climate change could be any day now. It might be February. Given, given it cuz this has never happened before. Right. This this stretch of warm weather has never happened before. <laughs> Except well, never mind. <laughs> so buy one, get one, 50% off all electric bikes in stock, Bentelli, Scootstar and Yamaha, youth ATVs, Bentelli scooters. Great time to buy an e-bike for your wife. One for you or an ATV for the kid or the grandkid. Vespa scooters are 10% off MSRP only for GLers. Prices are not marked. You have to mention GL. You know what else you do if you mention free GL? You get free winter storage for anything you buy at EcoFund. Is that right? ATVs with 50-inch snow plows starting at $59.99. Hmm. Side-by-sides with 60-inch plows. Finally, mention GL. And buy any vehicle in stock before Christmas, and you will get a gift of a 10-pound double-smoked ham from Grunhofer's Old Fashioned Meat Market in Hugo, the best ham you will ever have. That's EcoFunMotorsports.com. EcoFun Motorsports on Highway 97 in Columbus, Minnesota, (laughs) immediately west of 35. So immediately, you'd think you were in Forest Lake. (laughs) And in Burnsville on the uh, service road of life near County Road 42. Scooney's on the phone. Positive Thursday at Garage Logic, always brought to us by Schoon Over Body Works and Auto Care. They're in Shoreview, 1060 County Road E, a brand new, beautiful facility. And anything we need related to our automobiles, it can be had right there. 
at Schoonover's. So, Mike, um, my mom said something outrageous to me yesterday as we were getting her truck ready for winter. She goes, winter's half over. And I realized, although she's not correct, she is correct. We've really gotten away with one so far. And if the vehicles aren't ready to go, aren't ready for winter, now's the time. Let's take advantage of this. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this isn't this is going to last all winter. We're going to have a, it might be a, maybe a warmer than usual winter, or we might have uh, less snow than usual. But, you know, last week, that little dusting we got caused a lot of problems and a lot of havoc. And uh, yeah. I think a lot of folks were, were not prepared, number one, to you know, ease off the throttle and and um, and and take their time, but you know that that that's uh, that's not for me to to figure that problem out. But I think you know the whole checking the brakes, checking the tires, checking the batteries. You know, we're seeing so many um, customers coming in with batteries that are you know three, four, five years old and older, and um, they're on borrowed yes. time because. You know, as soon as we hit below zero, um, you're going to find out how well your battery holds up. So I, that's not, you know, in the outside of the Target uh, parking lot, you know, at nine o'clock at night on a Sunday is not the time to say, I wonder how my battery is going to hold out. We uh, uh, rec- Let the record show we did not discuss batteries or my mom before we started this conversation. And that's exactly what we dealt with yesterday. I, I went and put in a-, a new battery and she's got a little Toyota pickup uh, because that thing was older than dirt. Uh, and so we got her set up with new batteries. We checked her tires, made sure they're all up to pressure, made sure there's enough antifreeze, did all of that stuff. Uh, and, and that's what that's what everybody should be doing right now. The um, tread test. Can you explain the tread test with a coin, Mike? Everybody should do this right now today. Well, uh, it's, I, I think the rule of thumb is, is Lincoln's head should. Uh, you know, if 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 the top of you can see the top of Lincoln's head, then you need new tires. But yeah, you know, you can you can observe and and you can stick your fingers down in there, and if you have. Uh, you know, you know, uh, maybe a quarter of an inch or an, uh, even uh, maybe an eighth of an inch is too light, but a quarter of an inch or a half an inch of tread depth, you're, you're probably going to be okay. And if you're in doubt, then stop by and have somebody, you know, have us take a look at it and we'll be happy to, to look at it. But what I like thing, about you guys, thing. Mike, uh, Mike, wait, before we move to batteries, what I like about yeah. you guys is you'll put on the snow tires in the fall You'll take them back off for us in the spring. That's so convenient. It is. Who wants to have ugly tires in their garage? No, uh, no. They're course. too big and bulky. Let's not do that. Storm at Schoonovers. As for the battery, you're dead on. That thing's going to go dead w- w- at the most inopportune moment, uh, getting gas on the way to work. It's just what a pain. And it's not a big major expense. Get a new battery in that thing. Yeah, and it takes a second. Uh, no, it doesn't take a second. It takes less than a minute to pop the hood, walk around the front of the car, pull the latch, look up there, and and look at your battery. And if there's white chalky or blue chalky stuff on the top of the battery, or there's uh, it looks kind of wet, um, your battery is leaking. That means you have a bad battery, and you need a new one. Let's do that. That's as, that's as simple as it is. One more pet peeve. Check your headlights and tail lights. Come on, man. We're using our lights on the way to work and on the way home. Make sure all the headlights, all the marker lights, and the tail lights and brake lights are working. All of that can be handled at Schoonover Body Works. Copy that, Kenny. Actually, anything related to your vehicle can be handled at Schoonover Body Works and Auto Care. That's why they are Garage Logic's official body shop and always rated as one of the top shops in the metro. SchoonoverBodyWorks.com. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Here's John Joe Souchere. Sorry, <laughs> you're, you're ready, That's man. That's you, Joe. I'm sorry. Here's John. I'm sorry if you were offended. Yes, I was offended. Here's John Height. I was offended that you interrupted your own name. I interrupted so. myself. 
You did. Uh, this uh, news brought to you by North American Banking Company. Negotiations on a new contract for Minneapolis Police Department officers could soon go to a mediator. Contract negotiations began in September, and the Police Officers Federation of Minneapolis, the POFM, the union representing the city's officers, filed a request for a mediator with the State Bureau of Mediation Services earlier this month. MPD's previous contract expired at the end of 2022 and has been extended through contract talks. POFM President Sergeant Cheryl Schmidt said bi-weekly negotiation sessions have been what she says are ineffective to this point. The police union initially wanted an across-the-board 13.25% raise in 2023 for rank-and-file officers, a figure the city said it couldn't manage. In October, union came back to the table with incremental semi-annual raises totaling 25% by July 1st, 2025. The city countered with 16.5% over that period. Uh, you'll remember now, last month, the city and the union reached a tentative agreement on hiring and retention bonuses that would have awarded up to 18 grand over two and a half years for current officers and 15 grand in incentives for new hires. But a week later, city council members rejected that deal. Pedestrian died after being hit by two vehicles last night in Coon Rapids. Oh. It happened on Coon Rapids Boulevard Northwest in the area of 111th Avenue Northwest just after 8 o'clock. A woman was hit by a vehicle, according to the Noka County Sheriff's Office, going west on Coon Rapids Boulevard. After the first crash, the woman was hit by a second vehicle going in the same direction. Oh. Two male drivers of the vehicles were not injured and are cooperating with the investigation, which is still ongoing. Wow. Star Tribune reporting a 16th defendant in the Feeding Our Future cases pleaded guilty yesterday <laughs> in this fraud scheme, admitting, uh, yes, he did exaggerate the number of meals served to children in really? need in St. Cloud. 39-year-old Ahmed Sharif Omar Hashim pleaded guilty to wire fraud and confirmed to U.S. District Court Judge Nancy Brassell that he vastly inflated the 3,000 children a day he claimed to serve out of a strip mall Jeez. between 2020 and 2022. As a result, he and his company, Olive Management, received about $5 million in federal reimbursements. His attorney, Kristen Hendrick, added the prosecutors have verified invoices showing, yes, some food was purchased. Prosecutors said only 20 out of 2,000 children on the attendance rosters matched St. Claus school records. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, my, my thoughts are a little jumbled. Let's see if I can uh, make sense of them. At the time we were feeding or allegedly feeding children, was that ever a newsworthy item? Did, was, in other words, was the public aware that we had this program underway, that we were feeding children? Yeah, I think so. Sure. Because it yeah. strikes me that too many people, uh, I guess I'm talking about news gathering institutions only, too many people must have just taken it for granted that we were that this worked. Yeah, but, but how many people were even aware of the program? That's, that's what I, I that's my initial it was question. Not in our, I don't recall when this was being implemented. Because that if, small group of people, and it, it went like wildfire. Because given the way we understand that television news works, for example, if you had three thousand kids at a strip mall every day being fed, that would have been a would story. Have been that would have been covered. Yeah. By you would have had cameras there. Yeah. Uh, newspapers would have had photographs. It would have been stories. a feel good story. Well, yours would, wouldn't have. Well, we don't know if we have enough people. <laughs> Why do I got to add that cheap? I don't. Show? I wish you wouldn't. Sorry. The <laughs> but my point is that not that news gathering institutions were complicit in the fraud, right. for they were not. But they were complicit in. Oh, this is nope. where my thoughts are jumping. I think I have it. Okay, their curiosity failed them. Right? There, yeah, there's. When I listen to local radio, local news, read local papers, I rarely find anyone contesting what's going on. Right. It's just. It's just. Everything that's going on is accepted. Accepted. Yep. For example, there's... I heard a news anchor the other night say uh, they showed the three finalists for the state flag, uh, and the as. One of them said, well, they, they look somewhat similar, but they're all beautiful, aren't they? And no. I'm thinking, where, where is your gumption? Where, you know damn well you want to say, this looks like sh beep. <laughs> yep. Ooh, yes. Careful. 
What? Well, but it's not there. Food fraud. If if we were learning that thousands and thousands of kids were being fed at a restaurant in Cedar Riverside every day, that would have been on the news. But is it your answer to your question What when we had Liz Collin in studio? Don't go against the grain or you're going to be out of a job. Right. Uh, every station has one reporter that covers that, you know, one bulldog. Yep. Like in our case, it's Jay Coles. And um, the listeners or the viewers all try to discredit him when he exposes the truth. And they put words in his mouth and bill him as, you know, insane. And uh, who's the four? The four has one. The nine has one. Everybody has one person. Plus, a story like this, wouldn't you have to have somebody alert you to the fact that this program exists? I don't think any of us knew. <clears throat> well, and that, I mean, we might, have, we might have known the program tips, existed. News tips, but right. We never dreamt okay, that. Okay, here's you know. what we didn't know. We didn't know that, in this case, Ahmed Sharif Omar Dash Hashim was going to the Department of Education and saying, I need my next check. I'm feeding 3,000 kids. We didn't yeah. know that. Mm-hmm. If I remember right, this story was broken and brought to light in, uh, by right. a Somali guy, yes. right? It was yes. the Sahan Journal. Yeah. Right. Well, it, it, uh, no, it was somebody alerting the Sahan oh, Journal. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because he didn't, he thought it was wrong to go along with the program, and that's when he, this guy that Kenny's referring to finally yeah. raised his hand and said, uh, "This is this is not right here." Yeah. Otherwise, so it probably would have kept going on, right? Had this one person not alerted. Sure. Yeah, because if everybody thinks uh, this guy's serving three thousand people, he's only serving twenty. Nobody's going to know that unless somebody from the department who's handing him the check for millions. And the department or, was at fault. Obviously, yeah. they had yeah. no idea what they were Joe, doing. Joe, what, you're so naive. What you don't realize is we've got cat videos. We've got to name a <laughs> snow plow. Uh, we've got to talk about the weather and the new records. There's so many legitimate things we need to talk about over this boring, hard news stuff that right. nobody understands. All right, you're right. Continue, John. All right. Uh, follow up from the other day. Speaking of wacky stories, four Texans partnered with the Twin Cities cohort to lasso the Roseville Bank's ATM filled with thousands of dollars. They have now been charged. The police say the FBI is looking into the ultimately failed heist because it bears a striking resemblance to crimes committed elsewhere in the U.S. And this gang actually uh, has a name. Uh, they've been called the Hook and Chain Gang throughout the U.S. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they pirates, you like guys, a water bandit. You in guys, home alone. you guys. I got a great email from a guy who heard us talking about stealing the yep. ATM. He says, yep. he says, I'm out of prison now. I served my time. No, I, I'm a truck driver and I'm on the straight and narrow. But I got to tell you, it was easy to steal an ATM machine. And I felt like writing him back and said, Well, then why in the hell were you in prison? <laughs> 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 well, was he in prison for that? Or I for guess, something else? I can only assume he was so, in for that. I always assumed that not only is there a camera in there, but there's a tracking advice. Uh, I had, um, a he, tracking device. That was, I, that was nothing. And, that was easy to steal. Kenny, I can I can verify that because I shared a personal story on the Weekly Scramble with Michael, and that's how they caught the guy that stole one out of the place I was working at. Was there was a I, GPS device inside? You know what? I'm seeing Don Knotts and Tim Conway in the movie. Yeah. Yep. The Apple well, Dumpling Gang. Yes. The yes. Apple yes. Dumpling one Gang. Of, <laughs> one of these fellas has done this before and been in trouble for it. He's 23 year old Christopher Merchant of Houston, Texas. He had pleaded guilty to being among several others who targeted two bank ATMs in Tampa, Florida, back in July 2021. Was he the At smart that time, one? At that time, he was sentenced in federal court to 18 months in prison, given nine months credit for time served after his arrest, and released once his term was up. He was on court-ordered supervised release at the time of uh, this whole thing that happened in Roseville. Uh, all the other fellas are from out of state except one man, 22-year-old Decorius Durham of St. Paul. He was arrested. All five are in jail in lieu of $50,000 bail ahead of a court appearance today. The criminal complaint noted, uh, it should be noted that there have been more than 50 thefts matching this method of operation since the year wow. 2021. Really? Johnny, can you spell Decorius for me? D-E-K-O-R-I-U-S. Wow. If you're spelling Decorious with a K, you're going to jail. 
Is there, and, a, uh, Joel? Is there a K in Decorious? I thought it was going to be a C. There, there is in this one. D- I thought it was D- a C. A C. That got uh, a K right. or two Cs. Yeah, I hey, guess. How do you spell that? K? Those guys uh, for, are doing what my grandpa called working to get out of work. <laughs> yes, if they yeah, just applied exactly. themselves in the uh, real and honest world, they'd probably be successful. We interrupt this newscast to bring you a ruling request from uh, a guy named John in Arizona. Hmm. The Daily Mail had a story about an Amish buggy rocking back and forth in a Virginia mall parking lot. Uh-oh. My uh, question is, is is churning butter the same as canning apricots? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Wow. That buggy is oh, rocking. Yeah. You, Ma. That's, a, isn't that a Stevie Ray Vaughan song? That buggy is rocking. Is rocking don't, don't be knocking. I guess it's house, but not yes, yeah. close enough. Close enough. Close enough. Uh, and uh, if one that other barn local is a raisin. Don't come a grazing. Raisin. <laughs> God, one other raising. Got it. One other lo- local Got story. It, yep. If, uh, if Joe's Joe City Council has wrapped up all the important work, so now they have voted to further restrict tobacco sales across the city. That happened last night. The council unanimously passed an ordinance that would remove tobacco vending machines in the city and reduce the amount of licenses that can sell. But they're if in approved, favor of the dope. If approved by Mayor <laughs> Melvin Carter, the or, the dope the ordinance would lower the number of available taco, uh, tobacco shop licenses from 150 to 100, and tobacco product shop licenses from 25 to 15. A spokesman for the mayor's office indicates he does plan to sign the ordinance into law. What is the if rationale, you have, John? Well, I suppose they think uh, it's dangerous to smoke. I, I well, what about the dope? I, what about I, dope? I, I, I can't help you with the Do we job. have numbers on how many marijuana-related businesses, retail outlets, were, are going to be allowed when they finally, um, what is it, coming in two no, years, we a do year not. and a half? We do not. Right. No, that's when that number comes out, we'll have an argument. All right. We'll be able to argue it. If you do have a license now, by the way, you were grandfathered in, as long as you applied for your license before July 31st, 2021. Why don't we take a quick break here and uh, see what the rookies got to tell us. Well, I can tell you, folks, that Welter Heating is online at welterheating.com. They've got a very nicely done website, very easy to navigate, and it's full of information. How to get in touch with them, how to make an appointment, uh, tips on your cooling system, heating system, air purification system. And they're local here. They are in Minneapolis, and they've been around here for 100 years, over 100 years It's a great family, four generations, and they get it. They're full of common sense. They're very trustworthy. And again, they don't have a funny jingle, even though I've tried several. They've all been rejected by the Welter family saying, you don't have to do a jingle. Just just get the telephone number right and the website. Actually, they are a nice family, and they don't care what I do during their ad. That's why I'll tell you just to go to welterheating.com or dial 612-825-6867. Yes, we're hitting 50 right now, but if that heating unit is making funny noises or if you're not even sure when it was tuned up last time and you've lived in that house for a couple of years, it's time to get in touch with Welter. Have them do their tune-up by a certified tech and your AC unit, yep, yes. Still time to put it away and to get ready for next year. Remember them in the spring. 612-825-6867. Four generations and 100 years. That's enough for me. Heat up your shelter with Ray N. Welter. Not a garage logic town council member. Here's what you're missing. They ask people who are, quote, experts in fields to name their five favorite books about that field or whatever. And she yeah. was on that. They do that once a week. Well, that's cool. How come they didn't ask me? Well, you Chris, you have to read. read. Boy, Joe and I both My favorite took a book. shot there. My favorite book is probably the phone book. Well, and that's interesting because they don't even produce those anymore. The new phone books are here. The new phone books are I, here. I actually <laughs> still get a phone book once a year. Joe, you do only, not. It uh, we do, but it only has businesses. It's it's all yellow pages. It's about that thick with just yellow pages. Well, that's that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> What's coming up? What on what was that? Steve Martin. The jerk. Steve Martin the jerk. is the jerk. Thank yeah. You. The new Thank phone books you. are here. The new phone books are here. Go behind the scenes of Garage Logic with unfiltered audio and video access, invites to exclusive events, an emailed newsletter from the mayor himself, and more by signing up at GarageLogic.com. You're coming out with that uh, civil. Plot war. Civil war. Yeah. Here's-
is a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Sushi. All right, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. I got the bat signal from Todd from 30 Bills this morning. Hey, Reeves, this week, don't forget, the gift certificate deal is still on. So here's the here's the skinny. If you buy a $100 gift certificate to 30 Bills Restaurant in downtown Hopkins, you're going to get 20 bucks free. If you spend $200, 50 bucks free. Wow. Did you hear me right? Yeah. You hear that? Free. Cool. Free. I Free. did hear that. So um, they still have a bit of room for dinner before the Saturday night Squirrel Nut Zippers Christmas concert <gasps> at Hopkins well, Center for the Arts. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Oh, oh, when is that? When? Saturday. This Saturday. Oh. What is it? I got to get down there. I, I knew you were going to have a reaction. Oh, I love them so, so much. They're so cool. And I believe, Johnny, help me, that show is sold out, right? I would assume. Uh, they just, didn't you just, I, it probably, yeah. I Who's don't know. opening I for no them? Idea. The vanilla nut taps? You're, you're just, no, I'm not biting on that hook. Uh, that's a great, great, great band. Okay. Wonderful yeah, band. Really music. Yeah. Fun so, stuff. So, yeah. You wouldn't so like it because you're a grouch. A, yeah, you, <laughs> would, you wouldn't like it. You, you would know, hate it. It's it's good. You wouldn't like it. Boy, we took some shots at Joe there. Joe, I, I didn't I didn't make fun of you, Joe. I just want you to know. I'm intrigued by this brother and sister from Burnsville who sat in their parents' basement during COVID <laughs> and wrote some pretty nifty songs. They're, that sounds they're depressing. playing at First uh, Avenue um, Saturday night, Chris, sold out. Chris, would yeah. you like to finish your spot? 30 Are they Bales shoegazers? Restaurant, downtown Are they Hopkins Hopkins doing that? is your no. place. <laughs> and also the specials for this week. i got to take off my glasses so I can read the text. Oh, Lemon Lavender Social Tonic is the drink on hand. They do have a really cool uh, craft cocktail menu that they rotate throughout the course of the year. Let's see. Uh, charcuterie board. Is it charcuterie? Is that how you pronounce that? Yeah, Shukutari? it's close enough. Okay. No. How about the Cava... Rook, help me. C A V A T A P P I. Cavatappi pasta with spinach sauce. It's the Italian. Short, the short rib pot pie and the short rib lasagna <laughs> are also <laughs> on the menu as well. And including Josh, he was there over the weekend. Thanks for the shout out on Twitter, Josh. That was really cool. And apple crisp dessert. I it's like all a nice there apple for you. Crisp. I love yeah. apple crisp. Oh, yeah. Uh, 30 bales.com is the website. If you're looking for takeout, they're a fantastic spot. And if you call ahead, swing by on your way home and do the pickup. They're the best. They're GLers. Please stop in and let them know you heard about it on the Garage Logic podcast john i can't remember is the hopkins center for the performing arts those seats they're not permanent right yes yeah, the yeah, theater they're permanent. Seats. it's yeah. a theater it's a oh, theater yeah. we can't sit down during squirrel nuts and you can That's... stand up and misbehave no, no, it's it's gotta... the news please no it's got to be all out have you ever been to a squirrel nut zipper show it's mayhem yeah john yeah. Yes, Joe. Let's Aren't stop having fun. Well, we'll stop am. having fun now. You were talking about Drury. <laughs> I was, you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. I think he's a good lyricist. Yeah, he seems he's to be, but a lot of the stuff sounds like... He's capturing suburban angst. Why? Well, but he sounds like a, a 20-year-old kid, right? Which surprised me that you liked him. That's well, he's not, though. He's wow, about... I think he's older than that. John, he's get to the news. Uh, John, the, I'm sorry, uh, John, excuse uh, me. Uh, news here. Keep going. i got to ignore these people. Russian President Vladimir Putin said Jesus, today I there would be. Why I bother? <laughs> I say now you know how we so feel fun. every day. Yeah. <laughs> well, then find some other show. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's it. It's all over, folks. And don't think I won't. <laughs> don't think I won't. <laughs> Russian President Vladimir Putin said today there'd be no peace in Ukraine until the Kremlin realizes its goals, which he says remain unchanged after the two years of fighting that sent tensions soaring between Moscow and the West. He also dismissed the need for a second wave of mobilization of reservists. Uh, to fight in Ukraine, a move that has been deeply unpopular in Russia. He said there are some 617,000 Russian soldiers there right now, although the military specialist who watched this sort of thing says that's probably not true. Uh, Putin said there's 244,000 called up to fight alongside professional military forces. Meanwhile, a barrage of Russian missiles targeted Kiev on Wednesday, wounding at least 53 people, according to officials, as the Ukrainian president sought more military support in Europe after his trip to Washington secured no new pledges. 
Economic news, the Federal Reserve kept its key interest rate unchanged yesterday for a a third straight time in its official signal. They expect to make three quarter point cuts to the benchmark rate next year. Speaking at a news conference, uh, uh, Chair Jerome Powell said the federal officials are likely done raising interest rates because of how steadily inflation has cooled. That news sent stocks higher yesterday. A powerful rally across Wall Street sent the Dow to a record. It jumped 512 points for the first time past. 37,000. The NASDAQ and the S&P also rose. Uh, and I just checked a little bit ago, uh, as of right now, the Dow is up, but the NASDAQ and S&P are down today. Uh, before we get 10,000 emails, Kenny, I'm on the Hopkins Center for the Arts website. Tickets are still available. 55 wow. bucks. Oh, GLers, if you're anywhere close to that and you love music, you will. Oh, Squirrel Nuts. Are pers- they a local group? No, they're no. a national touring group. And oh. I, can we put them in a genre, John? It's no, because like, they do like some jump music, some swing. They do like current, rockabilly, I mean, swing, yeah, rock. Everything. It's just a a mixture yep. of genres thrown into a big pot and stirred up, and it's yep. just so much fun. They sound like fun. flaming lips. Exactly. Like. No, uh, not a – really? Well, I, I would. Well, aren't they a jump? Mus- musically, no. No, um, yeah. Because flaming lips are – maybe. Progressive. Well, on their website, it says this show is a must see for any true music lover inspired by 1920s jazz, klezmer, and vaudeville. SNZ's endlessly curious and innovative leader, Jimbo Mathis, has concocted a sound truly unique and original. No other artist of his generation has embraced and synthesized elect- eclectic excuse me, influences in such a seamless, authentic manner. When I saw him, I, it might have been in Austin had no idea who they were and they come out on stage and you're like oh who are these ass hats uh 30 seconds later you're bouncing around the room and having the best time you'll ever have in your whole life yeah a lot of fun from the uh no bleep sherlock file today relatively few americans are excited about a potential rematch President Joe Biden and Donald Trump in 2024, (laughs) although more Republicans appear to be satisfied to have Trump as their nominee than Democrats would be with Biden. This according to a new NORC Center for Public Affairs Research and Associated Press poll. The apathy from voters comes even as both Biden and Trump are facing relatively few obstacles in their paths to lock down their respective parties' nominations next year. In the back, sir, what can, what can I help you with? I'm waiting for you to be done, but go ahead. finish. Oh, story. OK. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Biden has amassed broad support from Democratic officials as a handful of mostly token primary challengers have struggled to spark momentum. Uh, and despite the 91 indictments across four criminal cases, including some centered on his attempts to overturn the last election, Donald Trump's grip on the GOP primary voters shows no signs of loosening a month before the first nominating contest in Iowa. Uh, motion to inspire a new bit in Garage Logic. Mm-hmm. This is inspired by your favorite vice president, Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. She is in Warsaw, Poland currently. I wonder if she knows that. Let's play a new game called <laughs> What in God's Name is She Talking About? Shall we? Let's play it. We all watched the television coverage of just yesterday. That's on top of everything else that we know and don't know yet based on what we've just been able to see. And because we've seen it or not, doesn't mean it hasn't happened. <laughs> what? But just limited to what we have seen. Wow. Well, I give up. What was she talking about? What she talking about? I have no idea. I don't either. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, believe, I believe she was reacting to the coverage of the um, Hamas and uh, Israel war. I believe that that's what she was asked about originally. Not, well, <clears throat> well, she's in Poland. It could have been about Ukraine and Russia. There's we don't fight, know what she was talking chance. about. That was, boy, wow. she said. That was good. She said two different things three different times, it sounded like. Play it once more. Okay. Yeah. Give that yeah, to no. me again. This we might be watched. the best one. The television coverage of just yesterday, that's on top of everything else that we know and don't know yet, based on what we've just been able to see. And because we've seen it or not doesn't mean it hasn't happened, (laughs) but just limited to what we have seen. Oh, 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 can I try something? Um, Vice President Harris, uh, it was announced the other day that Kevin O'Connell is going to go with a different starting quarterback. What did you see after the Vikings game on Sunday against the Raiders? We all watched the television coverage 
of just yesterday. That's on top of everything else that we know and don't know yet. Okay. Based on what we've just been able to see, and because we've seen it or not, doesn't mean it hasn't happened. Mm. Got it. Yeah, it was. I just looked but just it up. limited it is to what we have seen. Ukraine. Yeah. She got a hold of Denny Green's Ooh. book on dealing with the media. <laughs> oh, my God. That's you're Denny right. Green. We are who they think they were. Yeah. To crown them. <laughs> or they are who we think they were. The Bears are not who they thought we were. But yeah, so you want like to crown them? Crown them. Crown them. Crown your ass. Crown them with the Calcutta Clipper. Uh, uh, before last John one, moves. John. Before he moves uh, on, Joe, I have a question for you. Well, if you Re- wouldn't get interrupted so much, John, you'd get more news in. <laughs> huh? I have a question for you, Mr. Souchere, the mayor, about uh, John's last story, <laughs> voting for the uh, upcoming presidential election. Oh, boy. If you don't vote on the presidential B. ticket, <laughs> what effect does that have on the race? Let's say I go into the booth, I vote for... All the other races that I'm interested in, I leave the presidential portion of the ballot empty. What effect does that have on that race? How in the hell do I know? What do you think I am? Some political scientist? Yeah, statistician? (laughs) Well, I think the neat thing is, though, Kenny, is whether or not you decide to cast a vote, Uh, someone else most likely will cast a presidential vote for you. uh, Huh? hmm. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just ignore that and move along here. <laughs> and from all the convictions we've had, they'll probably be a Republican. Uh, in uh, yeah. news, good news for rookie. What do you and got? I save this one just for you, rookie. And we might have talked about this off air. I'm not sure. Okay, what do you got? Netflix has released the trailer for Beverly Hills Cop Axel F, Ooh. the fourth film in the popular Beverly Hills Cop franchise that Quattro. is slated to come out. Summer of 2024. Directed by Mark Bali, Axel F. hit screens about 30 years after Beverly Hills Cop 3, released in 1994. Murphy returns as the title character, a Detroit cop solving crimes in Beverly Hills. Judge Reinhold and John Ashton also return as local cops, Lieutenant Billy Rosewood and Sergeant John Taggart. Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Kevin Bacon are both newcomers to the Beverly Hills Cop universe in this movie. Murphy spoke to People magazine what it was like to come back to the franchise decades later. He said it was good, except he's getting old, and he had to do stunts. Back well, from producer Jerry Bruckheimer. I, I don't have was, time to talk about that. I just have one regret. My What's own, that? My only regret is that my friend, Governor Ventura, isn't in office so I can go to the residence and watch the movie with him. <laughs> right. That's my only regret about this movie, Alan. You know, dep- uh, uh, a good president would go a long way into winning the war for the future of the United States, the future of freedom and individuality, and and we don't have that on our horizon. We do, though, have a former president who had comments about the Axel Foley film. I find it very interesting that uh, no. when the heat got on, you dug yourself a hole. No, we we don't we don't need that. We uh, in fact take a break so I can tongue lash you what? and and tell you that you're going to be here at six Thank o'clock you. for a meeting. What did I do? Just hit the sound. No, well, but I need to, to hear. Serious, I'll tell you what. Chris. I'll tell you why you cool <laughs> off over there. Maybe you want to know Christopher's story. <laughs> How, how about that? It's about Maybe to come to, to an end, yeah, apparently. I guess it is. <laughs> we are now in December, a couple, uh, several days away from Christmas. Take your holiday shopping off. Take your difficult holiday shopping off the list with a wonderful gift card from mysoundstory.com. You can just do it in a matter of a couple clicks. All you have to do is get your team together, get your siblings, go in on a gift certificate for your parents, and get them a sound story at mysoundstory.com. For a limited time, enter the promo code flashlight. You'll get 10% off that sound story gift certificate. People have already booked their sound stories. That means you get grandma and grandpa talking about their lives, and you have it forever. And a lot of times they'll come over for Christmas and you're just there. They don't know about your great-great-grandkids. They won't know anything about grandma and grandpa. So this is how you do it. It's a gift you will never regret giving but it's a gift that everyone in your family will love. Just go to mysoundstory.com, like others have, enter promo code FLASHLIGHT, and get this special 10% off a gift certificate for Sound Story. That's promo code FLASHLIGHT at mysoundstory.com. Sound Story is the perfect gift, so make sure you do it today. Time's running out. All right. I'll be here tomorrow. I'll put on Caller. 
The Earth is not your mother. The Joe Suchere Show. Is this Dylan? Yes. Do you want more President Bush? No, Chris, I don't. <laughs> now they're on the move. The uh, traveling Lymans are on the move. Where are they? Wait, did they come home? They don't they're, come home for the coming, holidays, right? Yes, they're coming back. Oh, okay. Remember, she has a medical deal. They oh, got to get some right. stuff. That's right. They're at Jose Joaquin de El Olmedo International Airport, Guayaquil, Ecuador. Mm. On this day. Joe, today is December 14th. They only got one thing in this day. Minnesota really dropped the ball uh, on a lot of days. December is what's going on. It's cold, you know. On this day. December 14th. In 1798. A long time ago. A long time ago, yeah. Alexis Bailey was born in St. Joseph, Canada. He preceded Henry H. Sibley as an agent for the American Fur Company in Mendota, uh, one of the influential forces in the fur trade in Minnesota. Bailey was also one of the first settler colonists to grow wheat in Minnesota and a member of the territorial legislature. He died in 1861. Bailey oh. is spelled B-A-I-L-L-Y. Is that popcorn Oh, no, really? Okay. Just, that's his last name. I wonder. I would have assumed he was a descendant of the uh, uh, the Bailey nursery people. Well, that and well, he wouldn't have been a descendant, Matt, because he was born in well, seventeen ninety eight. Right. Maybe a precedent of them. No, but there was forebearer. Wasn't there a military aspect? Rook Beetle wasn't he part of that family? No, that was thank Sarge. you, G. Ellers. That was Sarge. Don't uh, forget, Rebus, yeah, Chris is fired <laughs> last day. Boy, you're really pushing the envelope with some of this stupid shit. <laughs> uh, last day, Reavers. Last day. Before I'm fired, don't forget about the Garage Logic Holiday Online Auction. Yes. It ends today, and that is in all caps from the sales staff. Joe, you have until what? you don't, but everybody else has until 8 p.m. today to save up to 70% off of retail price on some amazing items. That includes a five night, all inclusive golf vacation for two to the Dominican Republic, courtesy of Escape With Us Vacations, a riding lawnmower, trimmer, and blower from Tri State Bobcat, an ice fishing trip from Ballard's Resort, three different e bikes from Eco Fun Motorsports, a Canadian fishing trip at Fletcher Lake Resort, gift certificates at Grand Old Creamery, a certificate program that's free tuition for the training at Institute of Non Destructive Testing. And I've had a couple of inquiries about this. Osteo Strong's 12 month membership. Here's what Osteo Strong does they provide a unique system for strengthening joints, bones, and muscles by using a process called osteogenic loading. And also, finally, a 6x12 Doolittle trailer from Pleasureland RV. Just go to garagelogic.com Chris, and enter the keyword auction. Chris. Yes, Kenny. It's enclosed. It is enclosed. Okay, good to know. The Pleasureland RV 6x12 Doolittle trailer. All of that online. Enter the keyword auction. You have until 8 p.m. this evening. Garagelogic.com. Rook. Very nice, Mr. Reavers. Thank you much. And those of you that would like to be entertained with more videos, audio, whatever the case may be, you may subscribe to Garage Logic on YouTube. Yes, we've got a YouTube page you can subscribe to for free. And then just for a little taste, 10 bucks a month or $100 for the entire year, you can gift someone the gift of the Garage Logic Town Council. Find out all the details at garagelogic.com. That's when you get to eavesdrop on us prior to the show, during the show, see Reavers get yelled at after the show. It's all there. It's all there for you. GarageLogic.com. Watch me pack up a box. Yeah. I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still being heard? Yes. By who? Everybody. Everyone right well, now. the show's actually still going. The theme's going. See, John and Dylan are still playing. Did you chop? <laughs> I did chop. Okay. It is time once again that we check in with our guy, Mr. Money Talk. Josh Arnold is with us once again here in Garage Logic, and now's the time for you to do the same. So do not delay. Do exactly what I did and pick up that phone and dial 952-925-5608. That number once again is 952-925-5608. You call that number, you get Josh, and you will always get him for that free 48-minute financial consultation where he's going to deliver you the straight talk. 
talk, not the sugar-coated advice. And he's on the line with us once again here in Garage Logic. And boy, Josh, so much to discuss today. Uh, the Fed is going to stay on pause. You have new details on the Dodgers and the Otani contract. And boy, what else do you want to discuss today? One of my friends being so tight, he finds pennies on the ground and stretches it out for copper wire. I'm going to have to think about that one for a bit. Man, you are slow. Everybody else that I've shared that story with is doubled over on the ground laughing. <laughs> See, you get you get that. No, we don't want to want to talk about being so tight you can stretch pennies into copper wire, but could segue to commodity prices have been on the way down for the last year and a half. The Fed is definitely on pause, and now has been on pause for the last six months. And the likelihood is the Fed will stay on pause, in my estimation, for a good part of 2024. I do realize that after the Fed's meeting the last of this year, that there were indications that the Fed could, and I emphasize could, cut rates up to three times uh, next year, which boosted the Dow Jones indices yesterday to an all-time high. And we've had a follow-through with that today. The NASDAQ is an all-time high, and the S&P is also at a 52-week high. Favorite Apple hit a 52-week high before kicking back a little bit, as did Amazon. And the S&P success has been led, of course, by the Magnificent Seven, favorite Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Meta or Facebook, NVIDIA, and Tesla. I do believe that's seven companies. Some of the best performers this year on the Dow have been companies like Salesforce.com, which was on fire, and Intel, also on fire. Intel moved up today on the back of a some new chip announcements. And Intel, of course, still pays a very nice dividend, but they have a long way to go to catch up to AMD and NVIDIA. But the bigger news, I'll say, of the day is still the Fed. As we've talked, the Fed does control a lot of the macro narrative in the market. The Fed moves on interest rates. Inflation numbers, both in terms of the regular CPI, the core CPI, the producer price index, the core producer price index, and the personal consumption index have all been coming down, showing lesser signs of inflation. And that has given the Fed some indication that their policy, their tightening policy, higher interest rates and selling bonds into the marketplace has been working. And now there is talk that with inflation coming under control, and indeed several commentators, including the Secretary of Treasury, who's more than a commentator, have indicated that by late next year into 2024, inflation will be in the 2% range rather than the 3% range. Now I come back and look at some of the major factors that have been contributing to inflation. The biggest is oil, and the price of oil has dropped significantly from $85 a barrel to $70 a barrel as supply has picked up and many countries around the world are full up on oil. Natural gas prices are at major lows. So we could say that that's either weather related or demand has fallen off. And in the last several months, the price of natural gas has come down by more more than half. It is very significant. And the Fed is kept on pause. And that has been a nice boost, uh, provided a nice boost to the stock market overall and also to bond prices. And one of the things that we've seen is bond prices have moved up, yields have come down. So we've seen within the last month, the yield on the 10-year Treasury going from 5% to today 3.9%. We've seen the two-year Treasury go from 5%, a little over 5%, down to just over 4%. These are huge moves on Treasuries and long bond index 
CLT has had a big run as well this month, going from $85 a share to $97 a share. And with all the move in bonds, so yields come down, bond prices go up, there's still a lot of chatter as strategists continue to say stocks are overvalued, sell stocks, buy bonds. Bonds will be the place to be in 2024. Maybe. Are stocks overvalued? Depends on which stocks you are talking about. I'd say they're more fairly valued than overvalued. If something were over anything, maybe market technicians would look and say stocks after a strong run in November and early December might be in the overbought category. But that's a lot different than a year ago when stocks were definitely the oversold category. And that continued in to the new year. My recommendation as we come into the close of this year, if you feel uncomfortable with some of your stocks moving up, take a little off the table, take some profits. I'm sure you've got some losses from a year ago that could offset any taxable gains. If you have money in a taxable account, check with your uh, your accountant on that. Hold the money in cash until the new year comes around when you can redeploy that money back into stock. Having a little cash great as we talked there is going to be a pullback in the market stock market at some point there always is you have cash available to take advantage of that pullback you'll be glad you did forgot about otani yep go ahead gotta mention that the other day when i was talking about his contract i said well he's taking this deferral here's some places the dodgers could invest that money or he could invest that money to get that 700 million at the end of 10 years plus there's probably some interest that's going to accrue to otani on this deferral Lo and behold, I find no interest. Flat $700 million over 10 years. 680 of that is deferred. The Dodgers are giving him, or in his contract, he's not asking for any interest on that deferral money. The Dodgers, meanwhile, have got to take a hit for the luxury tax of $46 million a year. So the cost of the Dodgers for their luxury tax is $460 million and not the $700 million. I find that very interesting. Very good, Mr. Money Talk. You heard him, GLers. Now's the time for you to pick up the phone and make the call for that free 48-minute financial consultation by dialing 952-925-5608, where you always get straight talk and never, ever sugar-coated advice. Josh, once again, thank you so much for the time and the chat. Have a great rest of your day, a fantastic weekend, and we'll talk to you again next week. Thank you very much, Chris. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser.